With the commercial real estate market under siege this year, should you invest now or wait? That's the million dollar question going into 2021 for commercial investors with a potential recession on the horizon and so much unemployment in the market. If you do decide to invest now, what should you invest in? Is it time to get out of stocks like REITs and real estate ETFs and sell bonds at these all time lows? What, that's what many investors are asking themselves right now. I'm often asked, is it a good time to buy? My response will always remain the same. At the right price, it's always a good time to buy. It doesn't matter if the market's going up, down, or sideways. If you can hunt down a good price, it's the right time to buy. So where is this commercial real estate market headed? And what's the best place for cash flow? We're gonna hear from Andy Parker and Steve Kazel. What are you seeing in the commercial real estate space? Are investors out there buying with all this vacancy and uncertainty? Steve? You know, I don't necessarily think they're out there buying unless it's a really good deal, which there are some fantastic deals coming up. I think there's going to be some lag period between the time of actually suffer in that market and the time that it's actually happening now. So there's going to be about a one and a half, two year lag before we see anybody really get in trouble in those spaces because they are well funded at this point. You get into these writs that have heavy, heavy, heavy hands in these strip malls that might not necessarily be getting their cash flow like they saw it. They might be losing 20% in a month rather than gaining 20% in a month. How many months can they do that? That's kind of the question that nobody really knows. So there's some unforeseen things that are going to happen in that space. What we're seeing now is that most of them are still alive. They're mostly not closing their doors. You don't see a bunch of dark places out there, so they're surviving for now. It depends on this CARES Act, and it depends a little bit on if there's any more money coming at them. It's a big question. A lot of the REITs and ETFs that are out there buy assets that the everyday investor could not take down on their own. For example, you buy a commercial skyscraper, it's $40 million, you're not gonna be able to go do that by yourself, therefore you buy into a REIT or an ETF. But those REITs are heavily leveraged Many of them have 70, 80% on their books as far as the mortgage notes go. And if they're heavily invested into office space, a lot of these businesses are deciding to allow their employees to work at home. So are they gonna release, are they gonna renew those leases? What do you think, Steve? You know, there's a lot of uncertainty with that market as well. You have people coming into these office spaces on really, really good deals they haven't seen in years. You used to be fighting for office space and trying to get it. Now, you come and you make an offer for $250 a foot. Everybody else in the building's paying $3 a foot. How long does it take for those people who are currently paying the three figure out that everybody else is paying two? And then that's where you're going to see some gap. So I believe that there's still great deals out there. You're going to see a lot of empty office space into our future. They're going to have to repurpose some of these buildings, is my belief. There'll never be the amount of office space needed after the Zoom meetings have come forward. People are saving too much money. Precisely. The other thing that you're seeing out there is that you know, some of these banks will not allow the landlords to lease under a certain rate. So that presents a big problem. If you're trying to motivate people to come lease your office space and you want to drop the rent, but based on your loan terms, you're not allowed to, you're kind of in a sticky situation because yes, you can give them free rent to encourage them to come in, but that means your cap rates are going to drop and your cash flow is going to drop. So Andy, what are you seeing in multifamily and some of the other sectors in commercial real estate? Are they getting hit as hard as retail and office? Well, with the real estate market being the way it is, you know, inventory being low on the residential side, and with just uh, um, you know people coming in, you know the buying pool being so big, if, they, if people can't afford uh, their homes because prices are not coming down, there's not a lot of deals out there. Then uh, yeah, uh, the multifamily housing uh, sector is good because people always need a place to live. Yeah, I mean it's it's certainly traditionally the most conservative part when it comes to cap rates, meaning that if you buy an apartment building, your cap rate's going to be less. And if you buy a suburban office building, that's going to take on more risk. Therefore, you're going to get a better return. Now, what else are you seeing? What other trends? I mean, as you mentioned, people don't have to go you know, rent office space, but they do need a place to live. So are you bullish? Are you a buyer for these multifamily buildings at these lower cap rates? Uh, well, I mean, the lower cap rate makes it a little bit tougher, but the, the demand is still there. So I would say that as long as the housing market stays strong, and that separation between the haves and haves not, you know, is there, uh, you know, there's going to be a big demand. And I don't think we're keeping up with that demand right now. Yeah. And, and Steve, let, let's switch gears to industrial. 
that's an area that's defying all the odds. Industrial space is where warehousing and manufacturing takes place with COVID and the fact that online delivery is growing and it's rampant. The industrial space is booming. So what are you seeing out there as far as owners willing to either sell those buildings or asking you know higher rents than normal despite COVID. How's the industrial space doing? A little maybe short-term and some of this I guess COVID reaction time it might be a short-term thing and industrial space seems to be a long-term play so the long-term play is an Amazon it's a you know a Facebook office that needs to not go away it's these big 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 companies that are going to start acquiring these smaller spaces I believe um, so you're not going to see a big vacancy in that industrial for quite some time however if it's not repurposed correctly you're going to see a lot of vacancies in that space too. have this COVID thing goes away and all these new you know, things that we're doing change back a little bit. You have to be careful in that space. <laughs>